everyone. We're gonna get started now, so hopefully you can all hear me. Um, we're doing this webinar called School Closure, How to Teach Online and Learn from Home with CK12. Uh, it looks like some people are already starting the chat, which is great. Feel free to introduce yourselves. Just make sure you're sharing with everyone, so all panelists and attendees, or only our wonderful team here gets a chance to see what you're saying. Um, and if you have questions for us as you go, please feel free to use the Q&A window. That will help us track whether or not we've answered all your questions instead of them getting lost kind of in the general chat. So go ahead and populate that. I have some amazing teammates here today, Felix, uh, Carl, Star, all helping out. Um, so hopefully we can get all of your questions answered and we will stay on afterwards and just keep going through them until we're done. So uh, we'll get through some core content quickly and then go from there. So with that, why are we doing this today? We added this last minute webinar um, as schools are closing temporarily kind of around the US and around the world. And we wanna make sure that you have the tools and resources to easily transition to online schooling and back into the classroom down the road. So CK12 is the perfect solution for this. We're a leading nonprofit that has over 12 years of experience building a platform full of tools and resources to address teaching and learning in any environment, whether in-person classes or remote learning. Our newest Flexbook 2.0 platform and bite-sized concepts allow for assignments and activities to keep students engaged and support learning at any level. So what specifically does CK12 offer? Our Flexbook 2.0 platform includes core curriculum CK12 has created with the help of domain experts and well-known partners that spans K-12 science in middle school and high school math. You'll also find Flexbooks created by other educators and published under our license for subjects such as language arts, social studies, and even things like photography. Our core Flexbook offerings are complete with included adaptive practice questions, plus related content spanning a variety of modality types, from study guides to real world applications and videos to our own science simulations and math and science Plix interactives. Each of these lessons can be assigned as is or even customized under a Creative Commons license. Plus, you can use our built-in CK12 classes or stay with your existing integrated learning management system if you use Canvas, Google Classroom, or Schoology. Okay, so where to start? You can find Flexbooks using direct links under Math by Subject or Science or browse Flexbooks through our browse option or schools pages. If you're looking for ones nearby um, you, nearby districts, nearby schools that might have already made or customized Flexbooks. You can also use our search bar to find Flexbooks or specific topics you might be covering next. You can filter to search within our Flexbook 2.0 offerings or search across the site and then use our grade and category filters to narrow the search results. The community contributed tab that you see there may also be useful, especially if you need resources outside of CK12's core offerings. Finally, I recommend using our Explore menu. This gives you direct links to our Flexbooks 2.0, all CK12 Flexbooks, and the schools page I was just talking about. Plus, you can even find easy access to browse our study guides, our practice that adapts to student performance and even offers recommendations, our simulations and Plix interactives, and more. And all of the pieces that Lindsay was just sharing with you and I talked about are all 100% free for you to use. So you don't have to worry about any pay structure or getting contract approval. Um, you can just start assigning right away. So go ahead and find what you're looking for. Um, and from there, making assignments is easy. If you're using CK12 classes or Google Classroom, you can simply click on that assign button um, on any lesson or resource. Then pick which platform you wanna use. And once you pick that, choose your classes and even potentially a due date, depending on the situation and what you wanna do, and then assign away. Students will then see the assignment in their matching CK12 or Google class and be able to complete it there. Just make sure that they click the turn in button after they have saved their work for you to be able to see their progress. If you're using Canvas or Schoology, once you integrate CK12 into those platforms, you can find content under external tools in Canvas assignments or in the CK12 app when adding materials in Schoology. 
all assignments and viewing of progress for those should be done within those learning management systems. Once students have clicked turn in, you should see their scores show up in your CK12 class report or the matching report within a learning management system. If you open up the full report, which you can also do from Google Classroom and Canvas, and we're working on options for Schoology, you'll see more details, including skill levels for practice and the actual questions students have answered. You'll notice here that practice and quizzes have scores included, but all other modalities are for learning and have a complete or incomplete grade, either a check mark in CK12 or full or no credit in a learning management system. If you assign a lesson from a Flexbook 2.0, you can also see quick insights by opening up that lesson from the matching assignment page. These include the time a student spent on that page, including a histogram of where they spent their time. Plus, you can see the skill level for practice or percentage if a quiz is attached to the lesson. For science, you might even see paragraph mapping that highlights key ideas students missed when completing the practice. So this is just a super, super quick overview, but what we want to do is I'm going to steal this screen from Lindsay and I'm going to walk you through this site. So hopefully you guys can all see this setup right here. Um, the first thing you may want to do is just join or sign into CK12 and that's pretty straightforward. So if you click join here, you're welcome to set up a new account. These are all free as we said. Um, if you already use Google Classroom, definitely use the sign up with Google option. And then if you're using Microsoft OneNote, that might be a great kind of jump in point there. Or you can sign up using an email. So go ahead and sign up. Or if you already have an account, click sign in and you'll get the same menu options. We recommend signing in the same way each time. So you make sure that you have the same account that you're accessing. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in there. And then we're gonna walk you through finding resources because once you see what resources we have, that can be super helpful for working off of. Our team did create a brand new page that I'm gonna actually open up just so you can see it for a second. Um, ck12.org slash top concepts. And that will direct you to this awesome page where we said, you don't even have to think about it. We're gonna surface some content that is often assigned during the month of March for you and we'll keep moving forward in April and May and so on um, with core content for middle school and high school math and the same for science at the middle school and high school level. And you're welcome to kind of click through these, open up any of these assignments um, or open up any of these lessons and you can access that and see that content and go right from there. Um, and if you need to share it externally, whether that's with a parent or something like that, you can copy a link and share that with others to help you out from there. So that's one way that's kind of a new option starting today, actually, we just launched this. Um, so feel free to use that to give you some ideas of where to start if you're not really sure what to work off of. Um, so go ahead and start there. In general, on our site, I would say there's two main ways you could go about doing stuff. You could start by exploring our Flexbooks. So I could do that by looking at just our newest Flexbooks 2.0, or all of our Flexbooks available. That explore menu is kind of that great start starting point for you as you go through. Um, and then let's say I wanted to filter a little bit. So let's do middle school. Here you'd see some middle school books for algebra. I could scroll down in arithmetic. I could filter further and say, maybe I just want topics in measurement. We got some choices here as we go through. So I can open this book. Let's say I'm teaching middle school math. And I could go ahead in here and I could explore. I could pick a topic. I could open something up. And here you'll see a variety of resources. So we really believe that uh, people learn in a whole bunch of different ways and that supporting them with different options is really beneficial. So you'll see maybe another text page lesson that they might find as a great reference, a video to help them understand stuff, a couple real world applications when they get that never ending, when am I gonna ever use this question? 
and even one of our Plix interactives to help them work through that process. If I want to go into the main lesson, I can just click start. And this will take me to that lesson within that Flexbook. Here you'll see that they can explore different interactives. In our newest middle school math books, you'll even see inline questions that give students direct feedback, which is great when there's not someone there right with them already. So we could say, nope, that equals this. So let's try that again. And they can work their way through and kind of gain an understanding by exploring. And then you can see up here, those related or other resources for learning are available right there for you to work with as well. But if I wanted to assign this lesson, which would include both this text lesson with all the interactive pieces, as well as the attached practice, which you as a teacher can preview right here, I would simply click Assign, pick CK12 or Google Classroom. In this case, I'm going to pick CK12, the class I want to work off of. And then let's say this is due next Friday. I could choose multiple classes if I wanted to assign the same lesson to multiple classes there. And then I'm going to click Assign. So if you know that you're working within a broader topic and you want to navigate using that book, either from the main table of contents or using this table of contents on the side, you can easily go in, pick your topics, assign them to your students, and go from there. Another way to find content is to search. And I can use the search bar within a Flexbook to search within here. So let's say I'm looking for a topic both in this Flexbook or across all of CK12. And if I search within a textbook, it will kind of keep me in that newer 2.0 platform and I can navigate around. Or let's say I wanted to search across all of CK12. And this would be the same I'm going to use actually this logo for a second to take me back to our homepage. And I can use the same search bar in all of CK12 or filtered by the resource or grade that I'm working with in our new Tour.0 platform. So if I pick metric units here, I'll see a bunch of different resources. This would take me to a concept page with all these different places to look at. Or I could just say, Oh, it looks like there's some stuff in this particular book. I can filter by type. Let's say I just want a simulation to help out with this particular piece. Then I could open up that simulation and share that with my students. Or I could say I want all of my lessons as well. And maybe I want to filter if I'm actually teaching science to physical science. So what do we get here? Well, this is a physical science for middle school book. So let's go ahead and open up that lesson on standard units. And once again, I'm brought into this environment where I can assign content and have it go to my class. Now, anywhere you are on CK12 that you see an assign button, either this teal one at the top or an orange one on the side, you're more than welcome to click assign and assign it to your class, either directly to CK12 or Google Classroom right from our platform. The other piece that I find is super useful is our explore menu, which you can find here or at the top of our homepage, because this gives you a good idea of the different types of resources we have available. You can see our Flexbooks or Flexbooks 2.0 here. If you just want to assign practice questions or you just want students to play around with different interactives, you can jump straight to those browse pages. If you maybe they need an extra study guide to help them understand stuff, you could browse through those options. And then you may find school content super useful. And this will take you to most likely the state that you're in, or you can fill, kind of sort through. If you're international, you could see some books that other users have made across the world. But you'll see here some great examples of different resources, both for our core math and science topics, but El Paso is a great example where they've created actually content for other areas as well. So you'll see here an environmental systems one, an econ book, a history book, and you're more than welcome to use those as starting places for your content or assign it directly as you go through. All of those are options. Now, once you've made an assignment, then comes the question of actually seeing how your students are doing. So if I click on classes, 
I can open the class that I assigned content to. And you'll see this introducing percentages. I just assigned this four minutes ago, and I'll be able to find it in the assignments for that class. Now I made it due in March. So you can see it's right here. It's due on the 20th before this other 2.0 practice I had. So all the assignments are listed in here. And you can click on reports to see the reports for that class. These are some new ones I just did in the last day or so. So nobody's completed that except this little bit that Katie started already. And then you can see all of the work that they have completed. If you click on any of these check marks, these are learning options, so they get full or no credit, and it just gives you a turned in date. But if you click on a quiz score, if you happen to use a quiz or created a custom quiz in our class, you'd be able to see questions and answers. And then if I click on practice, I can see not only the goal of getting 10 correct, which gave Lindsay 100%, but the proficient score that she has there, the goal that Carl hit, he hit his 10 correct mastery score. Looks like a couple people turn stuff in late, which is giving this piece. If I click on this one here, this says needs to turn in. That turn in button that I, we were showing you in the slides that students have to click on, if you want to see the work that they've done, this means that Katie's already done this work, but she actually needs to go back and click that turn in button so that you can see the score that she's working off of. Well, that will give you a chance to understand kind of what's available. Um, what people have done, what those scores look like. Um, and you can even export this as a CSV file if you need that available, and it'll just download it for you. If I go back to classes, one of the biggest advantages to using our Flexbooks 2.0 is that we have insights available as well. So if I go ahead and open that lesson, I'll see the, exactly what the students would see. So they'd see kind of this lesson as they work their way through. They'd see the practice here to work off of. And then up in this toolbar, where the related content is, right above that is insights. And here, I'm gonna pick the class I wanna work off of. And you can see that Lindsay spent three minutes and 17 seconds looking through it. You can even see where she spent her time on this lesson using the histogram on the left side. And then the score, skill level score, not completion score, but skill level on how she's doing in this particular lesson accordingly. Same deal here. Steven hasn't submitted anything. It looks like I've done this work, this Katie score, but I haven't submitted the skill score. So I get a timestamp, but not a proficiency level yet. Um, so I wanna make sure that Katie goes back and submits that piece. So you can kind of work your way through and see different insights. So this is one of the advantages to using Lessons as 2.0 is that you get a little bit more um, in terms of where students spent their time, as well as a quick overview using color coding to see who hasn't submitted work and how students might be doing as you go through. Now, as we said, all of this is free. All of this is available right off the bat. I'm gonna go back to that homepage so you can kind of see all these different pieces. And you may find that if you kind of pick a topic, work your way through, that you like most of what we're doing, but you wanna narrow things down for your students. So this is just a like two minutes of bonus information um, that in addition to options to assign kind of multiple sections one shot, you'll see this customize button across our site. We work under a Creative Commons license, so you're welcome to take our content, non-commercially, you can't sell it, but you can take it and use it and you could say, I wanna just create a section on let's say plants and animals. So I could remove a bunch of other pieces in here that I don't need. I could even reorder chapters or open one up and reorder a section. And you can actually even go into a lesson. And before I do that, I'm just gonna save this book with kind of a demo title. Um, we recommend kind of using your school name up there to help you remember that this is the book you're working on. And then I'm gonna go ahead and open this and I have full ability to edit the lesson and tailor it to what I want. So get started as is, but if for any reason you did wanna jump in and try to do some customization, you're welcome to upload images that are copyright compliant, add in more media, use our math editor, and even edit text accordingly. So that's kind of the little bonus and option if you did wanna customize. But as we said, 
all of these books, whether I've taken to customize them or worked on from here. So these are some work that I've customized or I just wanna explore content that's ready to use and get started. They're all available to you for free right now. So that gave you this super fast, like 10 or so minute overview to get you kickstarted into CK12. And I think we're gonna stop here and see what questions you guys might have. We've had a lot of questions coming into our Q&A, which is great. Please keep typing your questions and Star and Carl and Felix are all answering some of them. Um, they're typing some of them, but Katie, let's, uh, do a few things live here. Um, we need to show them how they can translate these pages into other languages. Sure, I'd be happy to do that. So I can, at the bottom of the screen, and you'll see this both here and across our content, we have a built-in Google Translate option. So I could take this and I could switch this to Catalan, and it would adjust the lesson accordingly or the page accordingly. Um, you may find it easier to put it back in English, pick a book that you want to work off of, let's say that middle school math book I was working with, um, and then go ahead and translate it from there so that you have what you're looking at. Let's pick a new one. Let's pick Portuguese. So you're welcome to do that. This is also a great option if you have parents that are not English speakers as their native language, where you can share a link to this book and they can use that translate option and they can learn all of the same content that your students are learning and then kind of help them out with that option. Awesome. Um, we're getting a lot of questions in about learning management systems, um, which is great. And we'll stay on at the end of this webinar and, and answer any questions that continue to come in. Um, but do know that at the, I don't know if you want to show them, Katie, either in the explore option menu or in the footer, you might yeah, need to put it back into English. Um, our, our webinars page yep. or, um, is a great place to go if you're looking for information on um, how to get started with Flexbooks, how to customize Flexbooks. Of today, we're just really showing you what CK12 has to offer. But if you need to do a deeper dive into that content, um, Katie is at ck12.org slash webinars. And you'll be able to find webinars on a variety of topics. Uh, most of these webinars are about an hour in length, um, except for our learning management systems. If you're looking for information on Canvas and Schoology or for Google Classroom, we recommend that you come here and you watch these on-demand videos and scroll through to the parts that are relevant for you. Um, and then this webinar is being recorded and it will be included on this page uh, sometime tomorrow as well. Um, let's see, Katie, we had a question um about accessing the study guides which maybe I, I like the explore menu up at the top um so she just clicked on it this is just a great place to go if you're looking for something specific it's one easy way to get to study guides um if you're logged in as a as a teacher it was also um kind of scrolled down on that home page um which katie uh, another question that came in is about the students view can you explain what's the difference if you're signed on signed in as a teacher or signed in as a student Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, so there's kind of two pieces. I'm gonna go back to CK12 with this logo. Um, most of the site that you see is exactly what students would see. So there are a couple differences. One is their homepage is a little different. They have just a type in a topic that they're looking for and a jump straight to a lot of our Flexbook 2.0 course options. Um, and then quick links to our adaptive practice, interactives and study guides. Whereas if I go back to the teacher version, you'll see that there's a little more information in terms of what do you want to teach. Uh, there's information on a schools piece, flexbooks, because you might be looking kind of at that higher level, um, as well as integration information kind of briefly there and then some videos to show. So that's one of the places that are different. In terms of the view from a flexbook, let's say, so let me pick a different flexbook, so algebra one. This is identical to what a student would see, but instead of seeing choose and all these options, they basically are gonna kind of start or resume their work in that piece because they're not necessarily customizing or assigning or all those pieces. So some of the components and action options are a little different, but the actual book itself, they're gonna see this book, they're gonna see these resources, they're gonna see this content. And then if I was gonna preview this practice, they would have a start practice option instead of preview and then they would get kicked in and you could work your way through. 
If I do next, let's see if I can start messing up a bit. They're gonna do the same pieces right here. Their skill level will adjust just like yours is doing. And then it will actually stop them and kick in recommendations for them as they do practice. You as the teacher can return straight to practice. They actually have to kind of access one before they get allowed back into practice. Um, and then when they stop, they'll see the score report that you would see in reports. Um, but in terms of the navigation, the subjects and explore menus are the same. Um, they may not have the same access to kind of standards because those are less relevant for students. Um, but most of the rest of the pages, it's actually the same view um, with a little bit different here and there um, in terms of some extra resources for students or things that are more relevant to teachers. But the core content, whether you're looking at a lesson like this or otherwise, um, is available. And just one thing to note while I have something up that has highlights in it, you can see highlights right here. Um, and students can highlight and note take. It's a great reading strategy as they go through. Um, those are per account. So if you have something highlighted in your account, your student's not going to see the same highlights. Um, you would need to edit the content to kind of highlight it directly in the text. But this is a great way for you to kind of track some notes on things you want to cover. Um, and students can actively read as they go through. Great, I'm gonna let um, Carl and Star continue to type some answers um, to everyone. Thank you for all of your questions in the Q&A. Again, some are on pretty broad topics that might best be covered by looking at some of our archived webinars. Um, but I'm gonna steal the screen back from Katie here. We're gonna share a few more things with you and then just to be conscious of time, anybody who needs to jump off this webinar, um, hopefully we'll have their questions answered and be able to, and then we will stay on as long as we need to to answer everyone's questions. Uh, but one thing that I wanted to make sure everybody's keeping in mind is communicating with your students and their families. If you're using CK12 classes, you're welcome to use the Q&A feature to make posts, um, to have students ask questions, and allow others to help out by answering them. You can find similar options to post and answer questions in the stream in Google Classroom or discussions in Canvas and updates in Schoology. We also recommend that if you choose to use a Flexbook, whether in whole or in part, that you share that link with students and parents. Um, that way they'll have a great resource to review and they can even use the Google Translate feature that Katie previewed for you earlier. Um, this is a great option for um, folks whose primary language is not English. They can instantly translate our content. So what to do next? So if you're already using CK12, just think about assigning digital content more consistently um, and enhancing communication via Q&A within a class or a matching kind of place in your learning management, um, and then sharing those resources directly, sharing a link, um, whether that's in an email to parents or families um, or uh, assigning content from there. If you're new to CK12, that first step is to join. So if you're already in there, sign up. If you're new, go ahead and join CK12 and then you'll have full access to everything without any interruptions. Um, as we said, this is 100% free for you guys. We're a nonprofit, we are here to support you. Um, and then the next piece is use our browser search options to explore quick assigned content to CK12 or Google Class, or do that from within Canvas or Schoology. And then you can view class reports and insights to see how students are doing. If you need any help along the way, we are here to do that. You can check out our help desk. Great quick link is ck12.org slash help or clicking on the little help button at the top of our core website. You can sign up for live webinars in the future or view our archived ones, which I already showed you at ck12.org slash webinars. And then you can email support with any questions. We have a great team that will help you out and answer those questions. And so then the last piece, if you want to go one step further, um, you're welcome to try customizing pieces uh, to just kind of the simplest way, just as you saw, I could quickly remove chapters my kids don't need references for. I could add a couple books together, do something fun, or even kind of tweak little pieces if I want to get really fancy. Um, but everything's available as is. And then as we said, share CK12 both with your parents and also with colleagues or others. I know there's a lot of people scrambling for resources that they can access online right now. Um, so please feel free to spread the word and share these resources as they are free and available today. So our next scheduled live webinars are Monday, March 23rd and Monday, March 30th. 
and they're on our Flexbooks platform and how to customize books and create quizzes on CK12. So feel free to join us live and ask questions um, or, for, or if you're interested in becoming a CK12 certified educator or check out the recordings of these sessions from earlier this year if you're interested today and can't make it on those dates. Um, so that's the core content we were trying to cover with everybody joining us today. So we're going to stay on. There's, there's quite a few questions coming into Q&A, and so we're going to stay on and answer any of those questions that you might have. But for those of you who are needing to jump off, feel free to reach out to us at support at ck12.org as you use CK12 and have questions. Um, and make sure to share CK12 with others. Um, you can find us on all the socials at CK12 Foundation. Um, okay, Katie, I think it's time to start rapid fire answering some questions. What would you Great. like to tackle we'll first? See what we can get through. I actually caught the end of a chat asking about using student phones. Our site is available on phones. I'm going to actually share my screen for a second just so we can go back there and I can get ready to do stuff. Um, but all of this is accessible. I'm broadcasting this right now from a Chrome browser. Um, that's a pretty standard browser for a lot of laptops, especially students that are using Chromebooks. Um, but I could access this on a tablet. Um, I've done it on an iPad, on a Chrome tablet, on my teeny tiny little iPhone, um, Android devices, all of the above, completely accessible. All of the embedded interactives are accessible. Uh, the only place you might run into a little bit of trouble is if you're looking at one of our Sim or Plix interactives kind of from outside of Flexbook. Um, and they get a little hard to do on a teeny tiny screen. There's just too many moving parts. Um, but it's just a screen size just for that. Um, but even the interactives in the middle school math books work well on a phone. You can kind of play with them and go from there. So feel free to assign this work. Students can do practice on a phone. They can do all of that um, on whatever device they have access to. So let's see what else we have for questions. Um, we have one about commonly missed questions in reports. So there isn't one right now on commonly missed questions. Um, you can see right here that students have in this report kind of, you could kind of browse through and see which ones. Part of the issue with that piece is that our practice is adaptive. So if you look here, Lindsay answered 10 out of 12 questions right, and Carl answered, that's not the practice, this is practice. 12 out of 13 questions, right? So students might be getting different questions based on their skill level. It adapts to how they're doing and gives them more challenging questions or easier questions. Um, that might be a little more reasonable for a quiz, but right now you would just kind of browse and see what is available there. As we build out those class insights I was showing you in 2.0 more, um, you'll see more and more kind of class level components that might help you with that piece. Um, but hopefully that answers that part. Katie, several people were asking about classes, which is, you know, again, a pretty, pretty deep topic to get into. But maybe if you just want to go back out to the homepage and show them where to find classes and then just briefly, if they're trying to set them up with some students, how they could do that. Sure. So if you click on classes, so if you're using Google Classroom, Canvas, or Schoology, and I promise you for those that are asking some of those questions, I can pull that up and show you that as well. Um, but if you're not using one of those, then you'd want to set up a CK12 class as kind of the easy onboard option. And to do that, you would simply click plus to create a new class, pick a title, demo for school closure. You could pick subjects or write a description, pick a top color code, but really you just need a title for the class and then create class. And that class will show up in your class list. Um, you can kind of filter for stuff you've archived or gone from there. But if you go ahead into that class piece, the kind of first home screen is, this class is empty. You might want to add students. And you can do that from here or later on under members and then here. And you have a couple different options. So if you invite students by email, you would basically copy this email and they have directions on how to join your class. You could alternatively add students without an email. So for students, especially that are young, that don't necessarily have an email address, you could be the responsible adult for their accounts, add their first name, their username, if you wanted their last name or initial, um, and then a password there. And then you could add additional students. It's going to make me do something here. So, uh, and then demo. Um, and then I could add another student and kind of go, go through there. 
it's gonna not like that super short username, so I'd have to pick a different one. But then I could create those accounts and share the username and password with my students. And then once you've kind of gotten started, you can find students in other classes if you wanna break them into different groups and do like a kind of smaller grouping as well as the larger class group. So that's a way to kind of go through and find classes. Um, and if you're a school or a district where you gotta upload a ton of student rosters all in one shot, then you can click on this and this tells you the information we need and then you would email that to us at support and we get that imported into our system for you. Um, so that's kind of a batch uploading option. Um, but if you're just adding a small class, then probably the simplest option is to just send your students this email and they can join themselves. Um, and then from there, you can kind of navigate assignments and reports. This is Q&A, which we mentioned is a great place for communicating. You can ask a question, students could then answer that question or ask each other questions and go from there. Awesome, Katie, why don't you click on library and um, a couple questions were, people were asking where will they find things that they bookmark or try to keep for later. And then we had several questions about accessing or creating quizzes. And again, that's another pretty, pretty robust topic to cover, but we can at least show them what's under that create new tab there. Yeah, so there's kind of two things. One, you could create a brand new text or quiz if you wanted to kind of from scratch right here. I often find it probably easier to pick a lesson or a topic that you're working off of and customize from there. So let's say I'm in a particular lesson um, and depending on how you access your content, whether you're browsing just our practice, you'll see a customize option or in here under practice, you can see I want to customize this practice. And if you do that, it will seed your quiz with that batch of questions kind of as accessible. So demo, quiz March 2020 and you can kind of set attempts you can pick shuffling questions add time limits you can have the system automatically choose let's say 10 random questions it does warn you about kind of it will pull a new batch of 10 questions every time you reset that number with a variety of easy medium hard multiple choice open answer all the rest or you could even edit and go in and pick your own questions um, out of our batch of questions or add new questions using this add question option. Um, so that's like the 20 second overview of quizzes if you wanted to kind of customize one. Um, I definitely would recommend checking out the customizing webinar that's recorded or joining us if you're going to kind of build quizzes out because we go into depth on all the different types of questions and how to do that. Okay, or also, I don't know, we have we shown them live the help desk um, where they can search for, for articles that could help. So again, if, as you're trying to do something, you're like, I know Katie quickly demoed quizzes, but you can go into teachers and parents and um, you could search for practice or quizzes, how to create a quiz. Um, and you're going to get instructions right there. So um, watching our webinars is a good thing, but also heading to the help desk and finding quick articles is another good thing. Um, a bunch of questions are surrounding um okay I, I want to assign things and again katie showed you ck12 classes that anybody can use but if you are somebody who uses canvas or schoology you will not set up a ck12 class you will go in through canvas or through schoology look at katie she's so good here um you'll go in through canvas or through schoology and use us as the external tool um so all assignments will be made in there and she's pulling up a fall demo class here um, or some demo class and is going to show you. Um, so CK12 classes for everybody. Google Classroom, when you select Google Classroom from our site, it's going to ask you to connect to the Google classes that you already have set up, that you're already using with your schools. Um, so just go with what you know, whether that's Canvas, Schoology, or Google Classroom. And yeah. Katie, I'll kick it over to you to let you talk through what you're doing. Sure, so I'm just pulling up something to work with. So here's another example of a sign option. This isn't part of a Flexbook because our uh, K5 math is just practice and videos. But instead of picking CK12, I could pick a Google class. If I'm logged in with Google already, which is great, then I just pick that, connect it, and it will pull up all my classes in Google. I do not need to create new classes. And I would just pick my class, assign a date, and assign it to that classroom. So that was my fall class. And this is subtracting by crossing out. So if I go to classroom and I open up my fall class, 
I just posted a brand new assignment called subtracting by crossing out that's available here. And as students do this work and turn it in, they would see it under the instructions, they'd open the link, complete the work, turn it in, and then you would start seeing their grades populated here and you'd be able to access that. And underneath any one of these, you can open up the work that they've done and it would open up a matching class report. For Canvas, this is your like 10 second version. In Canvas, you do need to assign it uh, you do need to link it first. So I'm going to go back to CK12 for two seconds. And at the bottom of this web page, all the way down is this tools and apps piece. So step one, if you're new to CK12 and you don't see it in Canvas or Schoology, is to click on either one of these, whichever one matches, open up this form and have the person from your school or district that runs Canvas and Schoology and set it up, fill this out. And then they'll get the information they need, they'll link it on the back end. So that's step one. Under tools and apps, get them to fill out that form. Once it's filled out in Canvas, I can click new assignment. I can scroll down here. Under submission type, I pick external tool. Search for CK12. And once it's linked, you'll see it available in here. And this will kick you into our system. And so here you can see the different subject areas. I could browse Flexbooks, I could look for a topic. Um, you may find it easy to use the add to library button throughout stuff um, or customize stuff for two seconds and then you can easily open it from within here. And then I do the same exact thing I would do on CK12. I pick a topic and then instead of assign, I think it's create assignment or something like that. Oh, it's even assigned in here. And now it's creating that assignment. Select it, I can pick my points, my assignment group, once you do this once, it'll start preloading that information for you. And I can save it. Oop, demo. And then it will show up in assignments and you would see student grades under grades. So here's the assignment. I chose to leave it inside this window. So it's kind of the tablet view, um, but students can do that. They'd see the same thing. And then my grades would show up here. And just like within CK12, I could kind of view this out and under speed grader, it takes a little bit of effort. So you may want to check that video out or ask questions if you have it, but this will open up that class, same class report and you can see how students are doing and kind of browse through their work. So that's your two minute Canvas one in Schoology. Very similar concept. Step one is to fill out that form and get it connected on the back end. Once you're logged in, pick your course. And then under add materials, you should see the CK12 app once it's been connected. And then I do the same exact thing I just did for Canvas. The one difference is that after I make this assignment, so let's pick a topic and an assignment. Here we get to assign. So this creates an assignment, but the way Schoology works is a little bit different. Um, so I would need to go ahead and edit this for a second. And then unlike Canvas where you do it at the beginning, here I pick enable grading, my category, all of these pieces, and save my assignment. And then students would access it there. Schoology right now will give you their grades in the gradebook. Um, and we're working on getting you kind of that full class report based on what they have, but you would be able to see work that's done there. Okay, we're starting to knock off a chunk of these questions. Um, Katie, one is about uh, selecting a bunch of lessons for one Flexbook at a time. You kind of alluded to it earlier, but we didn't actually click into that. If somebody wants to assign lessons in bulk from one of our Flexbooks, how can they do that? Sure. So you go to the kind of table of contents for that whole thing, pick the assign option, pick your platform. I'm going to stick with CK12 for right now. And then the deal is that you can assign one class multiple lessons or if you're in an individual lesson you can assign it to multiple classes at the same time so I'm gonna pick let's say a demo science class and then I choose my unit so I can do it by unit so planet earth and I think it loads about 10 at a time so I want to assign this one and this one and this one pick my due dates for all of these and I could scroll all the way through and assign those things. So I picked those different pieces. You could get to the rest of the assignments next to it and assign. 
Um, so that's one way, and you would do it kind of by chapter, um, figuring that you're gonna do chunks at a time and then see how things go. Unless your class is, you know, amazingly planned out unlike mine was, and you know, you knew everything you were doing on every day with no exception and no emergency and no change in schedule. Um, but otherwise, yeah, go by chapter or unit. <laughs> It's flexible times right now. Um, everybody's gonna be flexible. Okay, um, one of the last questions that we have in here is I like to review assessments with the students after they have completed them. How do I see the overall, how the overall class did on a particular question or a particular quiz or practice? Yeah, so there are kind of two pieces to there. Um, you can do the classes, overall class report um, this way. And so if I went into the class that has grades and not the one I just made two seconds ago. Under reports, I can get a sense of kind of where my students are. So um, quiz grades are clean percentages. This gives me an idea that Carl and Steven kind of got 75 on their last attempt there. All of this assignment is new, so it's not surprising it hasn't been turned in yet. Um, and then I could click on any of these for details and get a little more information here. So um, I can actually see the questions they answered and went through. So that's one way to get kind of a class view. Um, and then on practice, you would just kind of browse your way through this piece. Let's scroll this over so that I can kind of click back and forth. And that part mastery, kind of a quick overview on the students there. So one option is the class report. The other option I said was on a particular assignment. And you can access this by opening the same link students do from within, um, let's pick a practice actually from within a CK12 class or within Canvas or within Schoology. If you click on the same link the students would click on to start that practice and open up that assignment, then under insights, you'll get some information. So here we have combining like terms. Under that toolbar, I get insights. And this is a good sense of that proficiency score level. I gotta pick the class I want. And then as we said, Lindsay and Carl and Ryan were doing okay. Katie and Steven haven't submitted that. Um, but if I click on any of them, I can get some more information there. So right now we don't have per question, kind of overall, all these kids messed up on this particular question or everyone did really well on these parts. Um, as we build out insights, we'll see what else we can surface. Um, but right now you can kind of get overall general information or within the class report, I can scroll down and see what each student did as they went through. All right, Katie, you're going to love the next one. It's a math question for you for the former math teacher. How do you handle graphing lessons and let's say pre-calc or calculus? Can we integrate Desmos in CK12? Sure. Um, so Desmos kind of activities aren't integrated as is right now. Um, you will see GeoGebra Interactive is kind of embedded in our stuff. Um, you're welcome to put the short version is kind of as you customize, you can add different pieces in here. So in my library, let's pick a lesson that I started customizing. Um, maybe this read, even though it's a science read and learned behavior might not have a lot of math. Um, but you can use anything that has an embed code. Uh, let's see if we can get that to load. So if I'm editing in a lesson, I don't want to add that to a flexbook. I want to edit this lesson. I can use this embed code option, um, kind of outside of a title or a bulleted list, and embed media. And so you could put a YouTube embed code, one of our clicks or simulation embed codes. You can embed questions from a quiz as inline questions, all sorts of options. So if you can pull an embed code and the platform that you are working with allows you to do so, you are more than welcome to embed that content in a lesson. Um, if restrictions for copyright reasons say that you can't use that content outside of that platform without a license, um, then we've had a lot of schools and districts put like links within here. I know BrainPop's an example where students did practice in a different system um, and they were already using it. And so they just put a link within their customized lesson and kicked kids out to that platform. Um, so feel free to embed or add content that fits our license, um, regardless of what that looks like. Okay, um, there's a question in Q&A that I think maybe Felix is going to answer because it's about Canvas. Um, there are I lots of might, questions. I might be able to actually answer it. So okay. the question is, did I, in Canvas, these classes are the classes I had in Canvas. So if you're already using Canvas, then we can go back to, let's say, our hide, back to our courses. These classes, my dashboard of courses, 
existed already. They were in Canvas. You don't have to do anything from CK12, just link it on the back end. Um, so if you're using Canvas, just leave your classes as is and start assigning. Okay. Um, there may be some questions that we missed in the chat window because um, those kind of get lost in the shuffle. If there are any last questions that you all have that have not been answered by our team today, please start typing them into the Q&A window now. Um, the question that just came in is, so it's okay to rename and or edit a Flexbook, add video clips, teacher made assessments? Absolutely. Um, that's the idea is that our books can be used as is and you can just copy and paste the URL and get it in the hands of your students um, right away. Or you can press that customize button and do as much customization as you'd like. Katie's just pulling up our terms of use. So as long as you are license compliant, um, you should be good to go with that. Um, it looks like there's a question about bookmarking, Katie. Um, we talked about the library earlier, but can you show an example of how somebody would add something to their library? Sure. Um, you'll see either in a flexbook level or a particular lesson or different modalities the option to add to library. So if you just want to bookmark something, um, whether it's a whole book that you're working, if you're customizing, it'll show up in your library already. But this is a great option. Let's say I want to assign from this for within Canvas or Schoology. I can add it to my library. And then on CK12, I'll be able to see that CK12 Earth Science for Middle School book right there. And I would be able to find it really easily clicking on the library tab from within Canvas or Schoology. So if I was down here, um, that's a great option because then once I make an assignment, regardless of the platform you're working with, you'd be able to see it in your library. And right here, same deal with Schoology. You can browse the whole site as is, or I can click on my library. And you'll now see that CK12 Earth Science for Middle School. So that's a great option for bookmarking. Um, you can also copy the URL from our page if you kind of track stuff external to our system. Um, but adding it to your library is a great bookmark option. And there's even folders in our library. You can kind of manage folders and sort and group stuff um, to make it easier to find. Can you show how to archive too? Because um, somebody just asked, can I delete entries that are in my library? Yeah, and this is the same. It's basically a window into the library, but yeah, you can archive it by clicking on that piece. Um, and that just kind of saves a copy outside of your regular part. So it doesn't completely go away in that if someone started customizing content you'd shared, we still need it accessible, but you can remove it from your library by archiving it accordingly. Okay, question about um, publishing assignments. One can publish assignments as you go, right? Yes. You're more than welcome to do so. In here, um, for Flexbook 2.0 lessons, you're allowed to set a future date if you wanted to. So if I picked any topic, actually it's probably easier to do it from here. You can see that I can set the start date as well as the due date. Um, for a lot of our other modalities, it kind of just goes live when you make it. Um, but here I'm allowed to set a future start date and that would post it in my CK12 class or Google Classroom at that time. Okay, um, like we told you, this video, this webinar has been recorded and it will be on ck12.org slash webinars um, probably by tomorrow morning. Please share it out to all your colleagues. Um, if there are any questions that we did not answer and you need additional help, email us at support at ck12.org and we'll be happy to answer um, any questions there. Um, otherwise, we really thank you for joining us and hope that this information was beneficial to you and whatever situation you're encountering right now. Um, we're going to sign off, but please be safe and healthy, everyone. Um, and we're here to support you as you continue to have questions. Thanks a lot for joining us.